Hi and welcome to 2020. Hope you're enjoying your day off. In Canada some things are changing right now with rules about what animals we can have, what animals we can't have, and nothing's really been set in stone yet. But today I just wanted to kind of just educate people a little bit more with what happens when we're keeping these animals in captivity and why ca being, them being in captivity isn't really bad for them. Hi! So Hi! Welcome to our channel! Hello. Hello. If you enjoy learning about reptiles and having a good laugh, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Hit. Smash it. Yes. Smash yes. it. Smash it right now. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Hit. Yes. Mas. Smash it. Mas. Okay. Mas. When, when you think about having a pet cat or a pet dog, you wouldn't think that letting them go outside and be in the wild would be a better life for them, do you? I personally don't. If, let's say you just took your dog, let it go outside, and let it wander free. It would most likely be picked up by someone, end up in some shelter, and being taken care of by them until it gets euthanized or someone else comes and adopts it. But would it go out and run free in the woods and live a wonderful life? Most likely not. It would die. And um, what, what we have to understand is long time ago when exotic animals started becoming popular, people had all sorts of animals that were extremely unsafe, like having a pet lion or a pet tiger. And it's understandable that there should be restrictions on these animals. But when it comes to exotic animals, um, same thing. We shouldn't really be taking them out of the wild. We should let what's in the wild be there. And there are rules to protect from that. So it's like, I can't go out in the woods and get some gardener snakes and then keep them as my pets. And that's a good thing. But captive bred animals is something totally different. So for instance, I've kept a collection of snakes now for over seven years. And I've bought animals that have been bred by other people inside their homes or at their facilities. For me, I have this little room where I take care of animals and these snakes, lots of them have been bred by me. All of my babies have been bred by me or from somebody else that I bought them from, captive bred. So when we have a captive bred animal, we have an animal that is born into our care. So I'm gonna show you this video of a baby boa And this, this baby was born basically in my hands. Like it was born, I had it in my hands, you get to see it take its first breath. In the wild, the survival rate is nothing compared to in captivity. In the wild, they don't live as long. In the wild, they end up with diseases and parasites and all sorts of other things. So if I take a snake from the wild, and then have it as a pet and let people touch it and everything, there's a lot of risk with that. You get all sorts of weird things. But right now there's a lot of fear of people talking about salmonella, and salmonella is not something <laughs> that you're really going to get from touching any of my snakes, because my snakes are very clean. I I've taken care of them in proper sanitary conditions from the time they're born. When we look at chickens, and actually the grocery, like, your highest chance of getting salmonella is from the little scrubber that you use to wash the dishes. You have a much higher chance of getting salmonella from that than from holding any of these animals. I hold them daily. My little daughter plays with them. Do you think that I would allow my daughter to play with animals that are going to get her sick? Obviously, you got to make sure they're clean. you got to make sure they're not rolling around in their own poop. You have to keep them clean, and that's just... 
that's just that. Right? Let, let's talk about also the difference. So if, if we took a wild animal and tried to keep it as a pet, it wouldn't, it might like do well, but it might not. You'd have an animal that's scared and that doesn't want to be handled. But when you have an animal that has been born in your care, you've raised it from the time it's a baby, it has trust in you. It's not afraid of you. In the wild, these animals would have to, so, so consider this, in the wild, a snake gives birth and she has about, let's say, 15 to 30 baby snakes. Now these baby snakes are defenseless. They're basically the worms of the forest. <laughs> When they're born, most of them get eaten. Other animals come along and they eat them and they kill them. And even adult snakes are at risk of being eaten by other animals. In the wild, something's born and the way that nature works is there's predators and then there's, yeah, there's just something eats something all over the place. So we have all these baby snakes and tons of other animals try to eat them. So. In the wild, most of these snakes won't survive. In captivity, now the good thing about breeding snakes in captivity is that you, like I said, you have it right from the beginning. You get to hold this snake from the time it's born and raise it to be a sweet snake. So I can go in and grab any of my baby snakes and hold them and not worry about being bit or anything. So right now I'm raising a pile of baby snakes and you can see when, when the snakes are born in captivity you end up with animals that are free from parasites, are free from diseases like as long as you're keeping your collection clean and everything and you have these babies that you can interact with and you can hold and this snake is used to me because I've held it from the time it's born. So now I take the time to make sure that the snake's eating properly and that the snake is pooping properly and shedding properly and doing everything that it needs to do properly that it's healthy and that it's non-aggressive or defensive before sending it home to someone. When somebody takes this animal home, they have an animal that behaves like this. And as it gets older, if you've continued to, you know, just do clean it once a week, feed it once a week to once every three weeks or more when it's an adult, and just take care of its basic needs, you don't even have to hold it that much. You could hold this snake about 15 minutes once a week, and that's all you'd have to do to have an animal that stays like this. So it's not a lot to ask or to expect from anyone. So it's like when I'm selling snakes to people as pets, I don't feel guilty. I don't feel like I'm taking anything from the wild because I'm not. I'm not taking the snake out of the wild. The snake was born here. And somebody can go out and buy a cat or buy a dog and be like, oh wow, this cat's so cute. This dog's so pretty. And then they have to feed that dog daily. They have to go take it for walks daily. It requires so much more work, so much more effort than these snakes do. And that's what I think is so amazing about reptiles as pets, especially snakes, because I'm allergic to cats and dogs. Lots of people are allergic to cats and dogs. And I would have never thought myself that I would want a pet snake. I have about 60 snakes in this room and they're all given exactly what they need to do well. When you see the way the animal behaves, does it seem like, you know, it's under stress, it's worried, it's afraid? Is it reacting even to my finger? Like, no, it's, it's so chill. And these amazing animals are, once you get over like your fears and whatever, they actually are one of the most calming creatures you can have. You can hang out with them. Even animals that have been rescued. 
I've seen change from an animal that is scared and not wanting to be touched. Rescuing animals is very rewarding and sometimes those animals will be the ones that have the most personality. So for instance, Annie was m totally mite infested. When I brought her home I had to spend hours treating her for mites, treating her home for mites, cleaning everything, and she wasn't the happiest snake and it's, it's understandable. But now Annie is one of the few, because not all boas will do this, not all snakes will do this, but there's always some, and Annie's one of the ones that she'll actually, almost every time I open this drawer, she'll, uh, she'll come out and uh, she'll, she'll see what's going on. So some, you'll, there'll always be the exception for all sorts of different animals. There'll always be one that seems to have a little bit more going on. So maybe like one out of every 20 snakes will behave the way Annie does. Where Annie will, she'll come and she wants to see what's going on. And it, every single time I open this drawer, this is how Annie behaves. And she's, she's, some of them, they come because they think they're going to be fed, so they're excited and you have to make sure that they know they're not going to be fed. But Annie always just kind of comes to the edge and she's like, hey, what's going on? And she, she looks at everything and she's ready to come out and hang out. When I first got Annie, it wasn't like this. It took, it took a while for Annie not to react to me in a negative way because before she was always scared. Now Annie's not scared and uh, she's ready to come out and see what's going on. So it's just like, this is something, does this mean that this snake <laughs> loves me or anything? No, it doesn't mean she loves me, but just, just look at that. She's ready to come out and she's just like, hey man, you gonna take me out? Especially if you're on a schedule, let's say every single day at 6 p.m. you decide you're gonna take your snake out and then every day at 6 p.m. they'll kinda of be like hey are you coming to take me out but you just see how calm she is and that to me that that's something special so now two years before that baby was born that you just saw hatching Nova came so this is two years before that other video. And uh, Nova's now four years old. She is a Cal Albino Sunglow. And she is my favorite snake. She isn't my most expensive snake, but to me, she's my most beautiful and she's my favorite snake. Um, I've raised her from the time she was in my hand. She was from the first litter of snakes that I ever produced. I'm going to keep her forever, or at least I hope I'll be able to keep her forever. There's nothing inside this snake that wants to hurt anyone. And th this amazing animal would not be able to survive in the wild, most likely. If, if I was to take her now and put her in the wild, she would most likely just die. First of all, because she's super bright, so she can't really hide her camouflage. And second of all, because like, I've taken care of her, I've fed her for the past four years. So in the wild, these snakes will just be trying to survive. It's not like snakes will be out just enjoying life and we're taking them out of that. It's more that we're giving them everything that they need and they're doing well. Taking an animal like this, raising it from to the time it's babies, and then one day, Nova's gonna have babies, and these babies might be even calmer than she is, might be even better pets than she is. And now I can take an animal that I've raised, that I know is healthy, that doesn't have any sicknesses, and then somebody else can have one of these as a pet. And because of doing this, because of captive breeding these animals, it means that less need to be taken from the wild, or none need to be taken out of the wild, because there's so many people that, that can take care of them properly. For instance, the guy in the video. And for me, I'm a bit of more of a field herper. I used to keep exotic reptiles and other creatures when I was a kid. 
And when I was 14, realized, hey, that you know, I get a lot out of this, but they don't really get anything. And no matter how hard I try, I can't really do enough for them. He says he used to keep reptiles, but it was just about him and it wasn't doing anything for the reptile. But th that would be true. If you were taking an animal from the wild, caging it, and then just, you know, keeping it for yourself, it's totally different than raising an animal that wasn't taken out of the wild. It's, it's basically exactly the reverse. If you take an animal out of the wild that is survived, thrived, and able to take care of itself in the wild, and then put it in captivity, it's not fair to the animal, and who knows what kind of things it could be carrying. Whereas when you take one of these animals that were born in captivity and raised as basically, you could say it's a wild animal, you could say it's a domestic animal. To me at this point, this, this is a domestic snake. It, it's not, it wouldn't survive in the wild. To take this and put it in the wild would be basically murdering it. In the, in, the, in the video, this guy also says, oh, you know, I like going out into the wild and seeing these animals live the way that they're meant to be in the wild. So I gave it up, and these days, uh, I like to go see animals in the wild, like the sagebrush lizard in Death Valley. And this was uh, not the actual picture, but a changeable lizard I wa watched in Kuala Lumpur, in the Kuala Lumpur bird park. And I like to go out and see them, how, how they really should be living. And I think that when we're thinking about all of these animals, this is what we should be thinking about. And that's fine, you know, I like to go out and see animals in the wild too, and I have no desire to take those wild animals and bring them home and keep them. That doesn't mean that that's best for these animals. If anyone buys a snake off of me, I want to make sure that they're going to give it everything that it needs. I want them to be able to spend even more time with it than me, because straight up I have so many animals that I can't I can't spend as much time with them as um, I'd like to. The, the, I view all of the snakes that I breed as my own pets and uh, I don't look at it like a factory. I don't take my snakes and just feed them as much as I can to get them as big as possible and producing as many babies and as selling as many as I can. I look at it like they're my pets. I'm going to take care of them the best that I can, make sure that they're healthy, make sure that they're clean, make sure that they're fed enough. And then when they do produce babies, that they go to someone that will take really good care of them and love them. I, I get joy out of these animals and I enjoy taking them to the park and watching them like kind of just like explore and do their thing. In the wild, these animals will hide most of the day. So like they'll hide, they'll go outside, catch some sunlight on a rock to heat up, then go hide, nighttime, find something to eat. Once they find it to eat, go somewhere, hide again. They spend most of their time hiding. There's people then that think we need to give them these giant houses with like forests that they can explorer and they don't have complex emotions they don't go out and say oh wow look it's it's a beautiful day i'm gonna go enjoy myself the most important thing for these animals is that like when when taking care of them that they have food they have water and they have a good temperature gradient they have to be able to go and get warm when they need to digest their food and then they need to be able to cool down. They need to be able to go somewhere where they can feel warm, they need to be able to go somewhere where they feel cool, and they need to be able to, you know, hide somewhere if they need to be safe. And every snake is, is different, so I've spent years getting to know the snakes, so I know which ones like to hide a lot and which ones don't like to hide. So some of my snakes, they never want to hide, so I don't even give them somewhere to hide. Thinking about space and what they need, we look at this, and lots of people will look at this and say this home is way too small for the animal. But if that was true, don't you think the animal would be trying to get out? Don't you think it would, you know, not be happy? But 
all the time. Look at that. It has all that space, but it's hiding in here because it feels safe in there. When you take a snake out and it doesn't want to be held, or like it's scared, it tries to run away. Do you, can you see how calm this snake is? And, and that's something that's something amazing. You cannot get an animal like this from the wild. That's this calm, that's this trusting. Another thing that really, really blows my mind is like just the ignorance of people thinking that something like this could kill me or eat me. Like, look, look at the size. This snake has about a one foot stomach. The largest thing that this snake could eat is like a rabbit. <laughs> so there's nothing to worry about. I would really have to harass the snake pretty bad to get it to bite me. If I rubbed myself with a rat or a rodent or something like that, that's the only way I could get this snake to bite me. Snakes grab you because they don't have arms or legs. Like, what do you expect them to do? <laughs> if they're not holding on to you, they'll fall down. So they kind of anchor on to you, and then they're good. And they even, like, see, she's, she's kind of like letting go and just crawling around. This is Sahara. Sahara is the first boa I ever bred. And that was three years ago. She's my largest boa. This is Nova's mom. And I've had this snake for probably six years. And she's only ever struck me once and that was when I was feeding her. It was my own stupid fault. This snake, just to help people understand a bit more, I like to talk about sustainability. Okay? You get a cat or dog, you're going to be feeding it daily. This snake only eats a large rat every three weeks. It's healthy, she's strong, she's been able to reproduce. All of my adult boas are this calm. The, the only one that's now like a little bit scared is Fade. She's basically a, a boa that I, I bought off someone I didn't raise. But any boa that I raise behaves the way this one does. I have absolutely no fear of this snake hurting me. I could let Avery play with Sahara and it'd be totally fine. At the same time, like, even when everything is safe, we still do things the way we're supposed to, you know? I, I don't leave Avery alone with any of my snakes ever. She's always under supervision. I'll take Sahara to the park, let her stretch out, let her go explore, and Avery will be there petting her and showing people like, hey, come pet her, see? And she's a sweetheart. So imagine there's a tree and you're growing this tree and the amount of effort that it takes to keep this tree straight. You put a few braces on it and you make sure that that tree grows straight and once it's gotten a little bit bigger and stronger and it's standing straight it's not going to start falling down. You plant another tree you don't give it any braces you let it just fall over and do whatever it wants before its roots are formed and then what ends up happening is you have a crooked tree. Now can you take a crooked tree and straighten it out? Most likely not. Or like the amount of effort that it would take to grow a tree straight, as opposed to just letting it go wild, is minimal. With these snakes, when you put the effort in when they're young, when they're babies, to have a tame animal, as they grow up they don't change. Now, neglect 
If you neglect anything, if you neglect anything, it'll go bad. If you neglect a child, there, it's not going to be grow into a good person, or the possibilities of it becoming a good person are much lower. If you neglect a dog, a dog will, little chihuahuas will be biting your ankles, and animals that are not taken care of will not behave properly. Animals that are taken care of will behave properly. A wild animal from the wild brought into situation like this most likely will die or will not be happy. It'll always be trying to get out, always trying to like escape and stuff. Whereas these animals, they're not like that. Like you see a wild snake move and they fly <laughs> because they have to get away from bad guys. They have to st keep sharp and not be eaten. Whereas these guys, like, they're so lazy, <laughs> they're so slow, and they, uh, they won't be afraid, they won't be running away from things, they won't be running away from you. Lots of time people think, oh wow, like, aren't you afraid it's gonna run away? No, it's not gonna run away, because it, it likes being around me. <laughs> and even this snake that I've had for so long, it doesn't mean that it, I, it loves me. Snakes are not capable of complex emotion. They're, they're never gonna love you. They definitely will like you or dislike you. If they dislike you, then they're not going to want to be around you. If, if you don't treat them all, obviously they're going to dislike you. Taking care of them, feeding them, they know. Hey, there's the guy that feeds me. There's the guy that, you know, takes me out. I can sit at the couch, watch a movie, and just hang out with my snakes, and that's, that's a nice thing. I love keeping my animals in impeccable condition. I like them to be clean. I like them to have, you know, perfect skin and uh, not have any issues. It's like it's, it's a pride that you take in your animals. I want to show you something. So we're going to look at this snake. This is an eight foot snake, okay? This is an eight foot snake. I'm holding it by the mouth. And I want to show you its teeth. Can you see? There's an eight foot snake. And that's what the teeth look like. So the teeth aren't bad. And you see I just held it. I opened it up its mouth and I showed you its teeth. So yes, they have teeth. The fangs aren't taken out. They don't have fangs because they're not venomous. Here in Canada, we're not allowed to have venomous snakes. So lots of the time I go for a walk, people will say, hey, does it have teeth? Yes, snakes have teeth, but it doesn't mean they're gonna use them to bite you. We all have teeth. It doesn't mean we go around biting people. Hopefully not. There's definitely trust that is built with snakes. Over time, they build trust with you. They are comfortable with you, touching them, holding them. I play with their faces a lot from the time they're little. This is the snake that is the most afraid of me. And just by the way I'm holding it, I'm a little bit more careful, a little bit more supportive. But this snake is a little bit afraid of me. It's a little bit more tense. It tries to kind of get away or tries to run away sometimes. Her name's Fade. And um, like you see, see how she's kind of like letting go of me instead of kind of like wrapping me? She's trying to kind of let go and get away. But um, through handling, she'll become hopefully more calm. But like I said, once, once the animal has that fear and it's a little bit more high strung, it's, it's harder to get that out than if you have them from the time they're a baby. If you have them from the time they're a baby, it's a lot easier to keep them calm. And for instance, if somebody was scared of snakes or not comfortable with snakes, I wouldn't let them hold her. Snakes, when you're less afraid and you're more confident with them, then they become more confident in you. 
if you're scared and, and you're holding them in a funny way or like about to drop them because you think they're going to bite you, then they get scared, they get worried, and then it's easy to make mistakes. Who's in there? Someone's in there. One of the main focuses of my channel is to help people learn things about snakes, learn things about reptiles so they don't have to be afraid of them anymore. And you can help me do that. If you have a special reptile that you feel is different, shows more personality than what is usual, I'd like to share your reptiles and your stories. So why don't you contact me in the comments below and let's start chatting. I am intimidated by the camera. It makes me feel awkward and nervous and all sorts of strange things. But I think that it's important to share with everyone how amazing these animals are. Shoot me a comment down below and let's see if we can connect.